said that the ranks of the Guyana police force are constantly being trained. But the government is Guyana is uncomfortable with the levels of crime and violence seen in the country. This is <laughs> Gail, that, that nicotine or whatever you're smoking, that can't be tobacco, man. That can't be some real, real cheap weed. Got to be, got to be for you to be making these type of statements. And then here what the analyst quote is saying, quote, we are constantly training our police officers to make them better qualified and better suited to deal with crime and criminality in the country. More forensic approaches to investigate. Paul, as the first deputy mayor, Sheena Wright, has officially resigned. She is now the 10th departure from within the Adams administration after Governor Kathy Hochul reportedly ordered Adams to clean house. Find out how well you are doing. If, if, and then is when you're going to know how you're doing. Don't, don't tell me, but no, 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 no nonsense, but no, no, no crime figures, as the case may be. And if you're talking, he can performance since he's there for over two years. Not an inspector, not an assistant superintendent, not a deputy superintendent, not a senior soup, not a superintendent, not a assistant commissioner has been promoted since he came to Kuvokoma. Not one. The morale is low. The morale is Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. More breaking news from City Hall as the first deputy mayor, Sheena Wright, has officially resigned. She is now the 10th departure from within the Adams administration after Governor Kathy Hochul reportedly ordered Adams to clean house. But we have just learned another one of his staffers who resigned yesterday, Mohamed Bayi, is due in court to face charges on obstruction of justice and witness tampering. Eyewitness News reporter Michelle Charlesworth has the latest from City Hall. Michelle. Well, the mayor's Q&A is happening right now. Hopefully we'll hear some uh, some answers from him. But uh, we just learned about this arrest this morning. It happened this morning. And also we know that there are now these 10 people, 10 people leaving City Hall. These are key positions running the city. So Deputy Mayor Sheena Wright officially resigned. Her brother-in-law, Phil Banks, Deputy Mayor of Public Safety, bowed out yesterday. Her husband, uh, that is Wright's husband, David Banks, the school's chancellor, is slated to leave within days. Replacing Wright is Maria Torres Springer, deputy mayor for housing, economic development, and workforce. A huge change in jobs uh, for her. She has decades of experience. The governor uh, has told the mayor to make things right, and uh, we're not sure how many people are being asked to leave, how many are leaving on their own. Torres Springer is experienced as a manager. She worked in the de Blasio administration. No word yet on who will replace a lot of these key positions, again, top positions. But the big news this morning, that arrest of Mohamed Bahi worked at, in uh, community affairs uh, on charges. He was arrested on charges of obstruction of justice and witness tampering, asking people allegedly to lie and destroy evidence. And he will be in court early this afternoon. A lot to talk about. Uh, again, the mayor is inside City Hall right now with a Q&A question and answer period for reporters trying to figure out who might be leaving next. Uh, as we know right now, 10 top positions. Oh. Participant highlights absence of solutions to alleged problems in Diana. The Alliance for Change has again struggled to draw a satisfactory audience during its recent visit to New York, where it attempted to engage Guyanese in the diaspora. The events, which were part of the AFC's listening and grounding tour, were used to engage persons on the party's efforts to rebuild itself. However, based on images posted by party executives, the events were poorly attended, and critics said it reflects the reality of the ailing AFC. At the October 4th meeting in Queens, New York, the AFC leader Nigel Hughes addressed the a handful of people, and during a questions and answers session, a former member of the party posed a pointed question about the party's future strategy. Are you prepared to challenge the president of the day? Are you going alone or with the PNC? How can you win as a small party? He asked, addressing the party's alignment with the larger People's National Congress and questioning the AFC's viability as an independent political force. Hughes acknowledged that the AFC had suffered significant political blows in recent years, attributing part of the downfall to one of its own candidates. The audience at the AFC's Manhattan event on October 5th. The AFC suffered some significant impact to its political appeal as a party. One of our candidates was the reason why the coalition came out of government. 
he admitted, referring to the collapse of the APNU plus AFC coalition in 2020. Hughes added that the party is now focused on rebuilding and is on a listening tour to gauge how Guyanese in the diaspora feel about its current direction. However, the mode at the Queen's New York meeting was punctuated by skepticism with one of the attendees, clearly disillusioned with the political process, voicing his frustration. This is why I don't like politicians. They want to force you. You really can't get nothing from them, he said, as hecklers from the audience interrupted his comments. Another attendee, a woman in the crowd, offered a more measured critique, pointing out the absence of solutions during the discussions. I heard a lot of the problems that Guyana faces. A lot of focus tonight has been on problems, and I feel a lot of the persons here are acutely aware of what those problems are. But I haven't heard many solutions to those problems, she said. Hughes was also pressed about the party's stance on key developmental projects, including the controversial cancellation of the Amela Falls hydropower project during the APNU plus AFC's time in office. You said that successive governments cancelled or completely abolished developmental plans for the country, yet when the coalition government got into power, they cancelled the Amela Falls project. Isn't that a contradiction? One man asked. The project, initially slated to generate 165 megawatts of renewable energy, was scrapped by the APNU plus AFC government in 2015. Since returning to office in 2020, the People's Progressive Party, Civic has revived plans to make the project part of its broader energy security plan, with several international investors expressing interest in its development. AFC's recent Manhattan event on October 5th, a more intimate wine and cheese gathering at the Richard Beaver Art Gallery, also saw a sparse turnout. Similarly, at a meeting held in Linden during August, the AFC took a blow due to the incredibly low turnout as support was dull and did not match the party's initial projections in what is supposedly one of its long-standing strongholds. The poor turnout at these US meetings mirrors the party's dwindling domestic support, a trend that has been evident in recent years. At its seventh national conference in 2022, 285 delegates attended, but at this year's conference, that number dropped to just 211, a clear indicator of the party's decline. The fallout from the AFC's termination of its political coalition with the APNU in 2022 also continues to roll. The APNU plus AFC coalition, formed ahead of the 2015 elections, propelled the two parties into government, but the alliance began to show cracks over time. The AFC had openly complained that the PNU was ignoring its smaller coalition members, leading to internal frustration. Every Guyanese should be left in open mouth or at the incredible achievement of President Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali. Though some darkness still clings stubbornly to him, he is emerging from the shadows. New book, believe it or not, and all by himself. What a guy, what a character and leader, what a writer and writer of all that is wrong not only in Diana but in the region, too. Are there some early whispers for the highest recognition of all, the Nobel Prize for Literature? If Israel's Melashon Begin could have won the Nobel Peace Prize with Egypt's Anwar Sadat in 1978, then the odds are overwhelming that Diana's Irfan Ali could do the same in literature in 2025. The smart money is on him. Say that again a superstar for a president. Say that again a superstar for a president. The smarter money is placed on a horse that goes by the name of questions. The office of the presidency does have its uses. It's stable of groomers and spongers, some as old as the time when Burnham was king of the hill. So, too, Ali is known for its skill in attracting thoroughbred foreign researchers and a complete toolkit of skills necessary to push and polish a finished product. The mystery is how much is push and how much is polish. The president, however, must be congratulated for reaping the payoff. His name is on the cover and his vision is that his title and his telling of a wonderful tale will now be etched into immortality. The least that observers should expect is that the children of hungry Guyanese would be able to partake of what could become mandatory reading about food security. It follows that old tradition, the practice of poor people all over the world, they always want better for their children. Though the parents know what it is to be hungry their offspring, at least, get to absorb the textbook vitamins and minerals that are so essential in food security. Clearly President Ali's choice of topic delivers with a powerful melody. What could be of more timeliness than a book about food security? Will somebody please lend a hand to a dummy? Timeliness has so much that could be said about it, where his excellency is concerned. 
Is the president an overachiever or what? Do Guyanese have a superstar for the ages on their hands and not have a clue about his presence? Where does President Ali find the time? How much does this say about how well he manages his time? Has Guyana's Yuba president been time to obey his will? As all Guyanese should know, including the naysayers and so-called scholars tied to the civil and political opposition, the president has so much on his hands. Yet he could have spared one hand and a few fingers to type away relentlessly and skillfully at a keyboard and deliver a book that is the stuff of genius. President Ali is forever winging his way from foreign capital to foreign capital. First class aviation accommodations do allow the space and serenity to coin a fulsome phrase or two while cruising at 35 feet. It is a new way to beat jet lag and avoid the dehydration that comes from partaking too much in the spirits that roam so freely and are poured so generously at such altitudes. The Superman Guyana leader could have had the presence of mind to pen a word of a few more when leading his caravans to all parts of Guyana, some by air, some by trail, and some by foot. Ali is such a champion writer that he must be commended for writing while walking at full speed over both hilly and pothole terrain. Talk about ferocious concentration. And Mohammed Irfan Ali is the man. The thought flashes that the head of state had the brilliant idea to write a book when he started writing orders for more birth certificates and land titles to be written for those Guyanese getting nowhere with obtaining such good stuff. How he wrote his book, and the story is not how it true yet, while so fully immersed in all these matters both routine and of a more complex nature is beyond the comprehension of ordinary people. What could be more complex than standing at the head of people responsible for managing Diana's greatest national resource patrimony, its grand oil bonanza? Forget all this partisan nonsense about the facto and the jury president. President Ali is the main man, isn't he? And that is no jive talking, folks. Oil is on the brain, and the oil is already a pain, and Excellency Ali stretches his 24-hour clock to spin his yarn. Mohammed Irfan Ali must be given his toga and tunic. He is the best. Oil is well on its way way to becoming a curse on Diana's leaders, but President Ali digs into unknown wells and discover a continuous burst of energy to write a book about food security. This is the divine grace that was the exclusive due of European kings, but now seized by a third world president for his advantage by Diana's Irfan Ali. This confirms that familiar adage, the pen is mightier than the sword. It depends in whose hand wields it. Simply astonishing, never fails to produce uncertainties. This confirms that familiar adage, the pen is mightier than the sword. It depends in whose hand wields it. Simply astonishing, never fails to produce uncertainties. The Alliance for Change said if it is elected to government, teachers will get a 45% increase in salary and that the administration will prioritize the needs of educators. The People's National Congress reform on the other hand is promising the educators 35% pay increase if they are elected to government. Both parties formed a coalition government that ruled Guyana between 2015 to 2020. Both parties made their promises in separate statements to mark World Teachers' Day which was celebrated on Saturday, in extending its heartfelt congratulations and best wishes to all teachers across Guyana. AFC said for three decades, this day has been dedicated to honoring the profound contributions of educators who work tirelessly to inspire, guide, and shape the minds of future generations. Teachers are the bedrock of our society, and their unwavering commitment to fostering knowledge, values, and creativity is invaluable. Let us not forget that in 2020, the PPPC government campaigned on a promise to significantly improve the conditions for teachers. Of, of, of what they call crime stats. I don't know if you have it on, on a slide there. Yes. Okay, beautiful. And these are the crime stats that they're looking at. Murder, rape, burglary, larceny from the person, kidnapping, break and enter, and larceny, robbery, robbery with arms, where guns used, robbery under arms with other instruments, robbery with violence, and robbery with aggravation. These are the crimes that they're saying, they, that they're analyzing, and these are the crimes where they say, the way they're checking to see how well they are doing. And with this category of crimes, Although they might find a deduction from last year in, in, last, in last year figures, the figures are, are too high. The fear of crime is already there, you know. And 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 that they, this is the, the, these are the figures, you know. So when they talk about reduction in crime, them thing they say is what they're, they're, they're looking at. They're not looking at others for well, they're not looking that white collar crime is not serious crime, manslaughter is not serious crime, cultivation on Processing cultivation of, of, of marijuana is not serious crime. 
possession and trafficking of cocaine. Rambo Matthews, which is not serious crime. Unlawful possession of arms and ammunition. Remember the guns where they find, where they said they find in Kitty by, by, by pressure at family. There's not serious crime. Offenses under the Domestic Violence Act, apart from rape, is not serious crime. Arson is not serious crime. Simple arson, the thief of carriage and other things is not serious crime. Cattle rustling is, is not serious crime. Carjacking is not serious crime. Smuggling, drug smuggling, drug smuggling, smuggling in gold is, is, not, is not serious crime. Discharging loaded firearm is not serious crime. And there are many offenses that, that, they're, that, that, that they're not treating as serious crime. They just say 11 and checking the 11 and they say there is it if if you want to know how well the police is doing all, all you gotta do is, is check the police act and the police act section three two as i always read it this is the role of the police this is what the police got to do not going and storing pot for the president or bowling ball for the president score runs or you say flavor the dance or look cook up competition or the curry competition that is not the role you or and and, and 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 more so going and clean up shit and clean up thing and all kind of thing about about the place that is not the role of the police here is the role of the police the police shall be employed for the prevention and detection of crime the preservation of law and order the preservation of the peace the repression of internal disturbances the protection of property the apprehension of offenders and the due enforcement of all laws and regulation with which it shall it is directly charged and shall perform military duty again as may be required of it under the authority of the minister if they want to do know how well they're doing do citizen surveys go to the communities and do surveys they got a lot of people with, say, with master's degrees and all kind of thing or if not they can find some independent body to do a survey to find out how well the police is doing don't just jump on crime a you're checking 11 crimes and they are the reduction from last year and then we say oh well we're doing if you want to check for people approval or disapproval of the of, of, of the uh, of the police is performing look at letters of criticism letters of recommendation support for any police program they get whether they get they, they're getting support cooperation and investigation letters to the editor editorial police reactions to do to do to, 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 public reactions to survey anything go to the public and find out how well you are doing if, if and then is when you're gonna know how you're doing don't don't tell me but no 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 nonsense but no 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 crime figures as the case may be and if you're talking he can performance since he's there for over two years not an inspector not an assistant superintendent not a deputy superintendent not a senior soup not a superintendent not a assistant commissioner has been promoted since he came to kubo command not one the morale is low the morale is low they 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 they're not they're not they're not motivated and he's at squato he's extended so how are you going to put a man who's who, who's, who's extended eh? how could you promote actually to promote a man who, who, who is who's extended and and then when you look at it what is he superintendent he superintendent big fraud in the Ghana police force million and million dollars hundreds of millions of dollars in fraud he, 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 he is thinking in. corruption at the highest level corruption at the at the at the, at the, at the highest level um he, he got his his deputy allegations of hundreds and millions of dollars of, of, of financial irregularity. That's what he's superintendent. He's superintendent, high crime rate, and not only high crime rate, the fear of crime. He, he's superintendent, the way they do our, our roadways, where, where lives are and limbs are in, are in perpetual peril. Yeah? He, he, he's superintendent of a, a police force that uh, the, 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 the trading div division is in shambles. He 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 he, 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 superintendent, you know, where, where ranks are leaving in large numbers. He himself said that they're getting problem 
retraining and uh, uh, retaining and recruiting person and you're asking for me you're asking the public you're asking the, the people to to extend the man who's already extend on extension you get on extension and you're going to extend him further but then again he said that jack they tell you that he's going to keep you till after election is he to say that greater government was a one-term government and when the ppp win jack they going to make him president so there is a man be hustling or the one to become become president a man who won't get nothing for show nothing for show and extended squatter and we trying we hustling to 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 make him a substantive commissioner and also a man who the superintendent drug runnings who subsets also um allegations of firearm runnings where a person got to pay 1.5 million dollars to get a firearm where they get firearm runnings at shift change drive young street a doctor in lamar street a house in rap street a building northwest of, of, of Brigham police station those are the allegations of serious serious firearm running low morale of, of the force scores of the superintendent scores scores of firearm missing person larger firearm when they come back they can't get them and all they do give them a letter say hey, approval granted for you to get another firearm and the people that buy they won't they won't fire them and where the public confidence isn't there people are beating up police left right and center and the conduct of the of the, of the police that is that you have on um on 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 the on on, on the, the social media and that is the person you want to become co commissioner police god help the guy god help the, the police force and god help guy yeah yeah i think that was a slip of the tongue when he said commissioner you already said um president he meant commissioner uh, that was a slip now let me tell you for the um this is a letter this is a article in um on the 25th of july government is uh, well let me read it it a caption government uneasy with levels of crime violence in guyana that so says anil nanlal the attorney general so everybody uh, thinks uh, this is kaicho news you are gonna look for it yourself man he said the attorney general and in Atlanta on Tuesday during his weekly episode of Issues in the News said that the ranks of the Guyana police force are constantly being trained. But the government is Guyana is uncomfortable with the levels of crime and violence seen in the country. This is <laughs> Gail, that, that nicotine or whatever you're smoking, that can't be tobacco, man. That can't be some real, real cheap weed. Got to be, got to be for you to be making these type of statements. And then hear what the analyst quote is saying, quote, we are constantly training our police officers to make them better qualified and better suited to deal with crime and criminality in the country. More forensic approaches to investigate to investigation are being pursued, end of quote. Nandalal told new listeners on his Facebook show. He further stated, quote, the government is not comfortable with the level of crime and violence in the society, and that is no secret. We have repeatedly accepted that fact and we are assiduously working to address the situation. End of quote. Let me read back the one and then I said, the government is not comfortable with the level of crime and violence in the society. And that is no secret. But well, there got to be a secret to get to share. Then he goes on to say, we have repeatedly accepted that fact and we are assiduously working to address the situation. <laughs> Look, if this thing is so serious, I will break out in bigger laughter. Nandala highlighted that there's a number of number of pieces of legislation the government will be passing. Then he goes on to say, quote, but the legislations are not the singular remedy that can comprehensively and successfully address this problem. We have to have a multifaceted approach. So we will take to Parliament shortly a bill that will increase penalties for different categories of offenses. End of quote. Traffic offenses, he said, will be attracting a higher will be attracting a higher penalty since Guyana, since in Guyana, 
there continues to be an unacceptable rate of road fatalities and the government has been passing a menu of statutory provisions intended to address this matter. We have introduced the offense of motor manslaughter. We have introduced a regime of disqualification of driver's license. We have introduced a regime that addresses drunken driver, dri drunken driving, driving in a comprehensive way, the AG explained. So <laughs> this is July, you know, of this year. Now the land back in the statement that they are comfortable with the levels of serious crime and violence in society. And then get to share now come to tell me that they can do such a fantastic job. So obviously they are singing from the same hymn sheet. Obviously, they're not singing from the same hymn sheet. So I can't understand this letter that Gail the Share wrote. But as I've said, let me tell you about the crystal ball. Let me go to my crystal ball before I move on. The crystal ball is saying that they will go ahead regardless and appoint a king. Right? Can the president can say, you want, go and challenge it to code. I, as the boss, I'm making the appointment. I recall back in 2006, around then, when Green, Henry Green, was to be appointed as commissioner of police. The U.S. and other um, bodies signaled their clear intention that they were uncomfortable or they were going to be uncomfortable with Green as the commissioner of police. They went so far as to revoke, the U.S. revoked Green's visa as a signal to how uncomfortable they are with this proposal to appoint um, Green as commissioner. Jack Dio was president. He's alleged, he's reported to have said that they're talking about these things, but they have never produced any evidence. That the US and them, you know, talking about Green, never produced any evidence. Because the, 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 the allegation was that he benefited from the drug trade, or he was benefiting from the drug trade. Jack Dio said he never produced any evidence. The ambassador at the time was a man named Bullin. African American was the ambassador. It was said, it was alleged. It was rumored that Boleyn confronted Jack Dio with the evidence. Right? Confronted, showing what he was talking about. And Jack Dio stopped talking about no evidence. But he went ahead and he appointed Green. So these people in K, people are saying, well, you got different dynamics now. Well, let me see that because my crystal ball is saying that they're going to go ahead and they're going to appoint him. A bandit was on Monday shot dead following a robbery at a jewelry store and pawn shop in New Amsterdam. Burbis. The incident occurred at about 10 at Vikram's Jewelry and Pawn Shop at the corner of Main and Trinity Streets, New Amsterdam. Police say one of two armed bandits was shot dead while a customer was injured. Dead bandit Terence John. The dead bandit was later identified as Terence John of Bristol Street and Boys Avenue, New Amsterdam. According to information received, two men armed with handguns and fully covered hoodies entered the jewelry store and proceeded to rob a customer who was subsequently shot in the right leg. In a statement on the matter, the police said the owner, who is a licensed firearm holder, heard the commotion and immediately opened fire on the perpetrators, causing them to run out of the business establishment with the stolen items. One eyewitness told the Guyana Times that two gunshots were heard as the men ran through Trinity Street leaving behind a motorbike. One of the men ran into the New Amsterdam Primary School compound, situated along Trinity Street, and was later found dead with a single gunshot injury to the chest. A Taurus 9mm handgun with a magazine containing several live rounds of ammunition along with other items that were stolen was found in the now dead man's pockets. Meanwhile, police have arrested a second suspect who is believed to be the accomplice. Both men are said to be members of the Scare Dem crew of Anvoys Avenue. Several of its members have been jailed for armed robberies. Two crew members were also injured by inmates while in prison back in 2014. In April 2022, crew member Queen Bagwandin was killed after he and three others attacked and robbed a businessman who operates a boat service at Kimbia in the upper Burbis River. In 2015, Bagwandin was in prison for 11 different robberies committed over two years. It was a bandit. You know, he did. There he did, right there. No, you didn't have yet to still breathe.
Guabastain Pig Soto Sareva, a 48-year-old Brazilian gold miner from Boa Vista. Brazil is now in police custody assisting with investigation after ranks of the Diana police force intercepted an aircraft in Bashism village, South Rupununi on Sunday. According to police, around 10.55 years acting on information received in regards to an aircraft making attempts to land on an illegal airstrip in Bashism village. South Rupununi, the commander of Regional Division No. 9 Senior Superintendent Rafael Rose, alongside Inspector Alfred, Detective Sergeant 21328 DeJonge, Sergeant Joseph, and other ranks from the Diana Police Force, accompanied by three members of the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit, visited the scene. Brazilian aircraft intercepted in Rupununi, one man arrested. A damaged plane propeller. Sergeant Joseph in the company of Constable Wenceslaus and Constable Berkeley, who were both armed, left the A. Shelton police station on an ATV motorcycle registration hashtag CL9533. Arriving at the location, it was observed that a large plot of land in the savannah featured an illegal airstrip running for approximately three miles north to south from the village's main access road. Parked on the airstrip facing north was a black, gold and white islander aircraft registration hashtag PUMBN and alongside it parked and facing the same direction was a heavily tinted, dark colored, four door pick pickup truck. Approaching the vehicles, ranks observed two light skinned males exit the aircraft and board the pickup. As they got closer the vehicle turned and drove off in a southerly direction causing one of the men to fall off in the process. At the same time, the pickup collided with and caused damage to the plane's right wing and front propeller. Acting swiftly, the ranks apprehended the man who fell off the pickup, but even though they discharged 2.38 rounds in the direction of the vehicle in an attempt to stop it, the driver managed to cross the Takatu River fleeing into neighboring Brazil, making a good escape. Sareva was informed of the offenses and a search conducted on his person revealed no illegal items. During the interrogation, he told police that the other man who escaped was the pilot of the aircraft and he was known to him only as Wallafi Kate. He informed ranks that he chartered the plane either last Wednesday or Thursday from the Santa Lenda Power Company in Brazil. Brazilian aircraft intercepted in Rupununi, one man arrested. Police found a Honda XR motorcycles in the nearby bushes. Recounting the journey over the last few days, he told the police that on Friday, October 4th, they had flown from Chimba Airstrip, Brazil, to Venezuela, where they dropped off 10 cylinders of mercury. They spent a few days there and then flew to Diana Landing on Sunday. Their mission was to purchase 10 cylinders of mercury from a Brazilian national only known as new to use in his gold operations in Brazil. A search of the plane revealed one iPhone 13 Pro Max, one Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, one Samsung Galaxy A3, one tracker phone, two Garmin GPS devices, one pair of earbuds, one wireless charger, several phone cables, a quantity of male clothing, two black haversacks. A further search of the area uncovered a black and white NK100 150cc motorcycle with registration number 4693 about 200 feet from the airstrip hidden in nearby bushes. Photographs were taken and the scene processed. Residents were also questioned and ranks obtained useful information. Sareva remains in custody as investigations are ongoing. As the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit continue to collaborate with its international partners to put a dent in the drug trade, the unit reportedly has played its part in the interception of over 26 kilograms of cocaine in Guinea-Bissau in West Africa. The drug mules after the interception. When contacted, Director James Singh could neither confirm nor deny the involvement of his unit only to say that he is aware of the case, but since it's an ongoing international investigation he would respectfully not divulge any information. The cocaine which reportedly originated from Venezuela was transported via an aircraft with registration number XASBT. Diana Times understands that through that exchange of information with CANU, the Maritime Analysis and Operations Center, Narcotics, the Drug Enforcement Administration, the Interpol Maritime Security Unit and Drugs Office and the Foreign Affairs Council, it was possible to establish the landing airfield used by the aircraft. With such information, the various organizations and forces were able to intercept the aircraft and when searched, the large shipment of drugs was found. At the time of the interception, one Colombian, two Mexicans, one Brazilian and one Ecuadorian were on board the aircraft. A release from MAOC stated that Guinea-Bissau's judicial police seized 2.63 tons of cocaine found on an aircraft at the country's international airport after information was shared by international partners that an aircraft would be flying to the country from Venezuela loaded with cocaine. After landing at the Osvaldo Vieira International Airport, 
The rapid intervention from the aforementioned Guinean authorities resulted in the seizure of 78 bales along the passenger's cabin. The release stated, this is one reported case in which Diana has been instrumental in drug seizures overseas. There are several others but due to international policies and protocols, publicizing could hinder ongoing investigations. However, Diana remains committed to working with international organizations to dismantle the narcotics trafficking networks. 8 Butterfly Sea Moss Powder Take your daily routine to the next level. Natural Vegan Superfood Powder Essential multivitamin powder made just for you. I thought Mavis had tendered a resignation huh? from party and politics, but apparently that's not the case. May is, May is on leave and receiving pay. Troy Fraser. The man then purportedly said to the officer, you ain't see attacking to someone, you, you ain't see attacking to some effing body and the eating that thing. The cop said to him, wait, is me you're talking to, so too? The businessman then allegedly said to the cop, carry you, guy any special word. 